Good afternoon, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really honored today to have this great opportunity, the chance to speak to you, our friends from Norway, from Europe in general. Uh, and I'm happy to speak about Western Armenia, its government. That might sound a little uh, weird and the mission of the government of Western Armenia. Uh, I'm given 10 minutes. This is a long uh, subject, but I'll try to accommodate. So let me start with, now let me start with introducing myself. My, my name is Karnik Sarkisian. I was born in Damascus, in Diaspora. My grandmother walked all the way from Sepastia to Damascus then Beirut. All her family were massacred. Her uncles were hanged in front of her eyes. I don't want you to feel bad and uh, spread uh, bad energy now, because we look forward, we look uh, to tomorrow, not back. We remember very well, we know everything. Let's start with the term genocide. I will beg you please, friends, don't use the term Armenian genocide. There's nothing called Armenian genocide. There is Armenian civilization, Armenian language, Armenian culture, Armenian food, wine, cognac, because we have created those things. It's our work. But the genocide is not our work. It was perpetrated against us. So it's better to say the genocide perpetrated against Armenians, the Armenians, not the Armenian genocide. This is misleading term, uh, term. Then, about recognition. Many countries, they said, we recognize the Armenian genocide, between brackets, and so what? It happened. Uh, what, what will you learn? add to our rights when, when a country or, or people recognize the Armenian genocide. The genocide, to be recognized, it has its uh, basis. First, genocide uh, was not uh, perpetrated only 24 April 1915. It started back in 18, uh, in 19, uh, sorry, 1892 until 96, big massacres against our Armenians in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Diyarbakir. Today's name is Diyarbakir. It's uh, Dikranagert, the city that uh, had, had been established and built by the King Dikran, the Great Dikran. Sassum, Erzurum, Sepastia, everywhere. 300,000 Armenians were killed during uh, 1892 and 96. 650 churches were demolished. Other 250 churches were converted to mosques. 50,000 children were orphaned. 250,000 Armenians were forced to convert to Islam. All those happened between 1892 and 96. Then in 1904, the beginning of the 20th century, the massacres of Adana. The same thing happened there with different numbers, different uh, proportion of numbers. And then in 24 April 1915, it was uh, a phenomenal day. Uh, they gathered all the intellectuals, scientists, politicians, Armenians, gathered them in a concentration camp and in the evening massacred them all. So the Armenian people will not have any leaders, any uh, leading figures. That's the importance of, 15, uh, of uh, 24 April 1915. Then the massacres continued until 1923, the day of the so-called uh, modern Turkey's Independence Day. So three uh, successive regimes, the Ottomans, then Ittihad ve Taraki, then Kemalist government, perpetrated genocide against Armenians. 
So when a country will recognize genocide, must mention all those things that the genocides from 1892 to 1923, not the 15 only, and the most important point, that the genocide was perpetrated against an indi indigenous people on their fatherlands, on their own land. We were not invading another country and then uh, they massacred us. No, we were uh, peacefully living on our land, unarmed, because we were occupied by the Ottomans, and we didn't have arms. They just came and massacred the people, gathered them in one village, massacred them. Anyway, we don't want to go uh, too far with the genocide thing. Let's go to the international law. Our government works on the basis of the international law. We believe only in the international law. And we have many, many uh, documents in the international law that uh, fixes or support our rights as Armenians of Western Armenia. Starting with the 14 points of President Woodrow Wilson, who announced them uh, on, uh, on 8th of January 1918. The 12th point is clearly speaking about the right of the people other than Ottomans, other than Turks, to have the right uh, to decide their future. Then, three days later, 11 January 1918, came the Russian decree signed by Vladimir Ilyich uh, Lenin, speaking directly this time about the right of independence for the Armenians of Western Armenia. Then, of course, when the armistice of Mudros signed, 30 October 1918, and the war uh, has ended, actually, on the ground, not yet by, by treaties, in the Mudros uh, uh, armistice, it was mentioned that the six Armenian vilayets are under the supervision of the great powers, the United States, France, and England. And any dispute on that or in that territories, those three countries have the right to interfere immediately by force to stop the dispute or any <laughs> conflict. That started from January 1919, started the process of peace conference in Versailles. From the first day, the British Foreign Ministry have introduced a memorandum where the Great Armenia was uh, suggested on the table. They wanted to create a strong Christian country <coughs> on their fatherlands. The Great Armenia started from Artsakh, today's Artsakh, until Trabizon on the Black Sea, and then Iligia on the Mediterranean Sea. I wish I, I had the time to prepare a presentation yeah, with, with maps and talk about this afterwards. Yeah. Similar memorandum was presented by the Armenian uh, delegation uh, led by Boros Nubar Pasha. It was given that uh, title, Boros Nubar Nubarian. He was the head of the delegation, Armenian delegation. Similar memorandum was uh, introduced and then as a result of the Versailles Peace Conference, a decision was announced on 19 January 1920, uh, recognizing, de facto recognizing, the Armenian state, the whole Armenian state. <coughs> the second point said, the borders of this state will be defined later. And that's the normal course of the recognizing uh, countries. Then the things developed until 11 May 1920, where the Sev Treaty of Sev, Peace Treaty of Sev, was signed uh, by the Armenians, 
and um, sorry, and the supreme powers, and handed to the Turkish side to sign it from the Turkish government. The same day, the United States Congress uh, accepted a resolution recognizing the state of Armenia. And according to the international law, my friends, recognition of states couldn't be reversed or cancelled. It is one time thing. Either you recognize a state, a country, or you don't. So when it is recognized, the Armenian state, it is recognized. And when you recognize a state, you recognize its government too. A government was, uh, was formed in France uh, starting 1916, led by, again, Boris Mubar, Mubarak. So, there is a recognition and there is a government. This recognition turned into de jure recognition in 11 May 1920. That's the final recognition, of course. So, we have now an international recognition of an Armenian state. We have an international recognition of the Armenian government. 27 countries, they were all the world in that time, the influential world, uh, acting countries in the world, they uh, uh, applied to the President of the United States to come up with the arbitral award drawing the east, uh, the western and no, uh, southern borders of Armenia. And the arbitral award came out 22nd November of 1920. So we have now the recognition of the state, recognition of the government, and we have an arbitral award from the United States government, the president, about the borders of this country. And uh, for your information, the arbitral award was signed by Woodrow Wilson and sealed with the great seal of the United States. That means it turned into a law of the United States. It's not the seal of the president that goes with the president. It's the grand seal of the United States. So now in the law of the United States exists the arbitral award that draws the border of the Armenian state. Unfortunately, 22nd November was the arbitral award, 29th of November, after seven days, Eastern Armenia, which was always called Russian Armenia, joined the Soviet Union, separated itself from the Armenian state. Understandable, even for us. So, still, the Armenian state is recognized. Kemal Atatürk started to put pressures uh, on all the territory of Western Armenia by force, and it is described today in the High Convention that when a foreign force, now it is foreign force, because internationally, this territory is Armenia. A foreign force using arms occupied the lands. So now, the Western Armenian lands, by the international law, is occupied territory. And the people living there are uh, people under occupation. As today's Russia, Russian Federation, announced that it is the continuation of the first Russian uh, state, the Bolshevik after Romanovs, the continuation, not the legal successors. There's a little difference. We, our government, we declared in nine, uh, 2014 that we are the continuation of the 1920s government recognized internationally. So it is not funny anymore. And it is not funny because 
Today we correspond with big countries, I will not name, but great countries who have veto right uh, in the uh, Security Council. We correspond with them as the Armen Western Armenian government. They answer us, they reply with sirs, Western Armenian government because they know what is the international law. They can't say, you don't have the right to continue the recognized government of 1920. Now, friends, I will not abuse your patience. <laughs> we have some, but it's very, very good. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm ready, by the way, during your stay, uh, if you wish, I can prepare a larger lecture for one hour, let's say, and speak about all those details that nobody knows about it. Anyway, let me brief now. We have the rights, we have the documents, but the real politics is real politics. If we don't create an international consensus about re-establishing Western Armenia, we can't dream about Western Armenia. And this is what we are trying to do now. This is our main mission now, to speak with the influential countries, to explain what is their interest in creating a Western Armenia. What will change in the region or in the world? We believe that peace and stability in the world starts when Middle East enjoys peace and stability. And Middle East will enjoy peace and stability when all the chronic problems are solved. All the mistakes of the past are corrected. And one of the main those problems are the, are, are, is Western Armenia. Humanity can't continue with all those mistakes. Otherwise, Islamic uh, State and uh, Jabhat Nusra, Daesh, Qaeda, many, many things we, we, uh, we will experience if we don't put the things in the right uh, track. Problems of the problem of the Kurds, of the Christian minorities, Assyrians, even Israel-Palestinian conflict. Why it is continuing? Because there are lots of uh, ready fields for creating new conflicts. Mm -hmm. So we have to start with solving <coughs> one by one. And we have to start with Western Armenia. Mm -hmm. I will uh, thank you for your patience. <laughs> I'm ready, as I said, to give larger and bigger uh, lecture if you wish. Uh, I will present my personal and my governments and the people of Western Armenia living in occupied lands or in diaspora. I will present our best wishes to you for uh, Palm Sunday and uh, Happy Easter and through you to Norway people and whole Europe with the message of love and peace and stability, especially for Europe and, in, uh, in, uh, of course, in general for the whole world. Okay. And I will thank you, thank you so for your beautiful book. <laughs> <laughs> you have traveled 200 countries in the world, yes. but expressed your love to Hayastan. Yes. So Therefore, I love Hayastan. But be sure that uh, the Armenians love you too, love your people, love all people of this planet, beautiful planet. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.